Uh, right then, we're back up. Are you are you good? My audio says it's included, but I'm just gonna um, hop on now to the stream and see what's working. I have one after that. I think judging by some of the other streams on Twitch, so I just had a quick look through. It's uh, a sort of it's a game wide, or sorry, Xbox wide issue. Just the uh, the PC ones look alright, but um, yeah, all of the all the ones on Xbox. Like it's been an issue, so uh, yeah, not ideal, but we'll get the race underway now. With the 30 second countdown just beginning, 19 drivers in, drivers out of position, some of the top guys in the championship near the front of the grid as well, so uh. Yeah, should be a should be a really good race, and, and thank you to everyone that's uh, stuck with us. Stuck it out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> throughout all of the uh, the technical difficulties that we've faced this evening. It's much appreciated the support as as always. But yeah, and hopefully we can get around some races. Hopefully now. we can, because it is race time. I sound quite crackly on the stream, but I'm not sure if it's always like that, because it always seems to be a bit of an issue with the second commentator, doesn't it? Mm. I don't know, if someone wouldn't mind putting in the chat if it's a bit worse than usual. Uh, could maybe try and sort that out before the race begins. Yeah, well, we'll have a bit of a, uh, bit of a turnaround anyway, a few minutes, obviously, for setups and, and the like. But, um... So we're not we're not waiting around too long. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's hope this race is interesting because I'm getting a bit tired. <laughs> Wake me up. Or keep me awake. Right then, how are we doing? Loading in now. Yeah, so we have got Camo then, it's just joined us. He will be in the McLaren. So we've got 19 drivers, pretty good turn turnout this evening. 19 drivers in the session, so we're only missing the one car, which is the second Red Bull, I believe. So yeah, pretty, pretty good all round there. As like I said, we're just waiting for everyone to put on the correct tyres and stuff. Obviously, the top 10, they'll still have to start on the softs, as those are the tyres that they go on to Q3 on, albeit they will now be fresh tyres. Um, but then those outside of the top 10, they still have the free choice to go on whatever they want. Um, I guess maybe Brindy now this time might opt for the mediums, because um, I imagine his thought process was perhaps that he'll be starting on fresh softs, so he might be able to get a jump on some of the guys around him. But obviously, now that everyone's on fresh tyres, Maybe it's um, maybe it's a bit more um, appetising to start on the mediums. Would you say, James? Um, yeah, I think the, the mediums to soft strategy is quite a nice one around here. Um, worked well for me personally in, in, in a few races that I've been. But um, yeah, obviously, a safety car could, could mess that up because. Uh, Mediums do last quite a long time. If there's a safety car from uh, about lap three, lap four, you can probably stretch them to the end. And even if there's one lap one, you probably want to be pitting for the hard to the end. But um, no, without any without any hiccups, I'd, I'd be starting on the mediums outside the top ten, unless uh, the, the usual kind of P11, P12, maybe maybe go for the softs and, and try and keep up with the different guys. But obviously, with the uh, the lobby V start it won't be um, anywhere for, for those guys in the top ten. So yeah, probably probably it's just worth starting on the mediums and hoping it's not another safety car. Yeah, something that I'll bring up in a moment then once we've all loaded in because some of the guys will just be doing the little trick to keep their tyres warm, so I don't think we'll get the clearest of indications as to what tyres everyone's 
going to be actually starting on until we're there on the grid for the start of the formation lap. As we are about to go, we're about to get underway then. It's fair play, it was a relatively quick turnaround in the end. After said technical difficulties. And there we go. So then. Formation up just about to begin. The audio again is a bit quiet for some reason. Maybe that's just me. Right then, tyres. Let's have a look. So we got Jib Jab on the mediums. Brindy again goes for the softs, and then it's everyone else on the mediums apart from Camo who starts P19 and is on the softs. So it's pretty much the same as it was before then, James. So, um, again, what do you think, what do you make of the hat? Slightly surprised that Brindy's gone for softs? Um, yeah, I am a little, but also I'm sure he'll be, he'll be aware of the, the chances of an early safety car messing up starting on medium 20, so, uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see if, if there is an early safety car, obviously it will be like a, a great call, but if there isn't, then maybe he might room not starting, uh, not starting on the mediums. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, obviously, everyone else, apart from Camo as well, going on, going on, going on the medium tyres. Um, yeah, I think I think Tom can tell on this one for sure. Is it a bit of base tracks? But um, yeah, as I say, I think the, the mediums are quite a nice race tyre, and obviously being very quick on the end on the, on the soft tyres. You could probably do like ten laps on fresh softs at the end. So. That could be a, a real benefit if, if uh, the safety car doesn't mess up the guys start on the mediums. We could see the likes of, of Jib Chab or Predators maybe getting some, uh, some good points on it. And obviously if there is a safety car after these stuff guys have hit, that's, that's even better. Because I think even if you had to stretch and stop for the whole 13 laps, you could probably just about do it. Is that the soft, sorry, or the mediums? <laughs> sorry, I'm just saying that. Pardon? Was that the softs you were saying, or the mediums? No, I think it's probably worth on the mediums and just hoping there's not a early safety car. Uh, you should be able to mm. keep up with the softs runners and a big train if, you're, if you've got any decent pace and then, yeah, it'll be quick at the end. Yeah, definitely. Of course, as you say, a safety car could definitely shake things up a little bit then, but here we go. After all the delays, seemingly everything trying to stop us from doing this race, we are here on the grid. And about to start then, the Belgian Grand Prix here for SLR Division 1. Season 6, round 14 at the Spa Francorchamps legendary circuit that it is it is three four five red lights and Prez has got a drive through from the start but we are underway here in spa and it looks as though dylan's got a pretty nice start there from p3 he's going to be challenging i think sem into turn one but it is still funny that leads the way and dylan is past sem then and into p2 so it's a brilliant start ideal start from the mercedes and it looks as though there's a bit of hassle going on behind as we've got, I think, the Williams driver side by side. So it looks as though someone's lost out on of the start. As Grindy is already ahead of his teammate Connor and into about P7 or 8 by the looks of things. As we wait for time to sort themselves out. But Connor's going to be coming out in here. They're going to be going side by side, I think, into Lecom. But no. Grindy covers his teammate off and remains there. It's P9 by the looks of things. Yes, Sam. So, yeah, pretty good start from him. Sam's the down to fourth, Jason to the third, some uh, changes towards the front as well. Predators is obviously losing that quite a lot of that drive through, and uh, I think it's that Thunder Water. I think Ben's down five as well, so he uh, might have been damaged by the bits of things as well. I'm not sure if you caught that. Oh, I didn't know. We've got a clock as well right at the back, as uh, Liam's getting challenged by Brindy. 
Griffiths has had a decent start then. And through Stabilo and Paul Frere. Oh, Cam Hope's head as well. Pretty decent run. As yeah, I think this is Camo's debut as well, so that's a fantastic start for him. Uh, if we can find that. As you say, is Brindy going to be able to challenge Liam into the bus stop? Not on this occasion. As it looks as though there's a bit of contact up ahead, sorry. As we've got Sem and Jason now battling it out for P3. And Sem gets that move done pretty easily. And it looks as though Jason's missing an end plate, James. Yes, he is. Is he? Uh, Jason then in oh, the yeah, half he is. missing an end plate. So the left side of the right one. It's, it's the flat. right. Um, Right, I wonder if he's yeah, hit yeah, yeah. maybe one of the Mercedes cars or, or something because it looks as though there was a, some contact going on into the bus stop but it doesn't look like he's holding him back too much as he's getting the slipstream off of Sem's car then as um, everything's messing up. Oh, yeah, the um, is horrible, isn't it? But he's not quite able to get past him on this occasion. We can only apologise again for all the technical difficulties we're having. We've got a Renault into the pits, that is Taz. Riggsy's also had a moment, James, as he's a long way behind, and Predators as well. Um, right at the back, so I don't quite know what's happened to them. No, I haven't quite knew that either. I've been, I've been watching the gap in the front, and if Mercedes can take their cards right here, then they could, they could get a fantastic result. If, uh, if Dylan's happy to sit behind Bunny and keep his DRS and make sure that the send doesn't get past him, then they could be sitting free in the in about 20 laps of time, obviously, it's quite it's cool that now, but. Um, yeah, they've got themselves in a, in a pretty position early on. Yeah, most definitely. We've been fixated on this battle at the front then. And it looks as though this damage is definitely costing Jason a lot because he's now got Czech then right on the back of him. Down the back straight. Is Czech going to chance it into Blanchard? I don't think he's going to be close enough, but definitely into the bus stop is a good opportunity then for the Ferrari to get past the Haas car. And look at that. Look at the overspeed that Czech's going to have on him. Covers off the outside as Jason, but he's going to be no match for Czech who gets on through easily and at the earliest opportunity Jason then does come into the pits to change that front wing as we've got yellow flags now behind I uh, don't know what that is for but it looks as though we've got Benz and Danny battling out, out of the um, bus stop as well yeah, spin it at the bus stop from right end right, right end plate so I'd gone using the pits as well uh, my only guess to Riggs is that he must have got a bit of damage and, and bit of the hard or he's just chosen to, to try that different strategy but um now, do you know by the fact that Taz also pitted, uh, probably damage from both Renaults? Yeah, not ideal then for them. A um, few drivers in the pits then. Clock as well joining Jason and Camo in the pits as uh, Danny and Benz were battling it out, but Benz really dropped off. Um, it, it's been a bit untidy off the start, it has to be said. Um, so hopefully it can kind of settle down now and get into a bit of a rhythm as Brindy Boy not really pushing onto the back of Liam as quickly as we might have suspected he would. He is up four already off the start though, so he's made a fantastic start after a slightly underwhelming qualifying, but Liam's had a good start as well in the Avatari upper position himself. The Sem is just about keeping in touch with the Mercedes, he's really got to, he can't afford to let them go. Because like you say James, if he lets them go, they will be able to just manage this race. Because Van Dorn's already got a time penalty and Sem is nearly over a second away from the back of Dylan, which would lose him DRS, so that's going to be crucial for him. Really they're not going to be close enough on this occasion, so we'll go over to Sem. Dylan does set the fastest lap of the race, so they're obviously pushing these Mercedes. Can Sem keep in check as Dylan goes deep then into the source? And it looks as though Sem is going to keep the DRS, and that is big for his race. As really, both Mercedes cars are actually not using that much of the ERS, and clock is round. Out of pool for it, he is all sorts of backwards. Taz nearly hitting him as well. Um, yeah, it looks as though Fox was really struggling. Then uh, as Sem has actually lost touch now to the Mercedes cars. Seems to be struggling a little bit. The grip, he's all over the place, kind of sliding around. And someone else who's sliding around is Czech, who almost lost the car there out of Lecom. That was really tight because, well, we saw him. We flicked over to him he's all over the shop. And we've got Ben's round as well, James. 
Um, or he's he's brought some yellow flags out as well, so it's been a really scruffy start, it has to be said. Yeah, this is uh, exactly what I was implying earlier, there was two Mercedes, if they can break that DRS back to set, and that'd be crucial. Uh, if they're more than happy to just work with each other and bring them along to it, then breaking that DRS will uh, make it a hell of a lot easier for them. But, but yeah, we've seen quite a lot of spins and quite a bit of damage. It's, it's not been the cleanest of starts, but I mean, I'd like to say that the, uh, the, the V-start and all of the, the lobby issues have probably had some effect on that. But, um, I think we'd like to have Jason and Big Two hit very early. Um, they're not out of this race at all yet. If they've got some good pace, then they can maybe get themselves back into contention. Obviously, with DRS being so powerful here with the, the long camel straight, um, even if your tyres are, are quite warm compared to, to some of the other guys you, you might say we have a stick with again, yeah. sorry, James, it's so again, as you say, Blitz spins its back round, but yeah, it's not looking like a great race to him after uh, having already joined late. Yeah, I think Chex made a bit of a mistake as well because he's dropped um, off of off of Sen. So second off Sen. Dylan's got a lot of battery at disposal and is now closing in onto the back of Bunny and Sen hasn't got the DRS then this time round. Mm -hmm. Someone who has got DRS is Liam, but he is being hunted down by Brindy. But again, Brindy's just not really able to get close to Liam when it matters, which is down the straights. So I wonder if Liam's um, running a, a bit of a higher top speed setup. Than Brindy because Brindy seems to be faster in sector two, but Liam in sector one and three can't really get near or can't um, isn't challenged. Sorry, by Brindy. Um, Checks lost out now to McEwen as well, so I don't quite know what happened to him, but he's running relatively low on the battery as well. As Sam picks up a time penalty, and that is big for the race, as not only is he uh, 1.5 seconds off the back of the Mercedes, he now has a further three to be added on come the end of the race. So. Uh, I think, like you say, James, it's definitely at this stage of the race advantage to the two Mercedes cars out front. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, what, yellow flags again, sorry. Again. Yeah, same really should have a factory yeah. safety car would help with that problem, wouldn't it? Um, McEwen was quite a bit behind him with the uh, stuff that's used in their lap or so he's tight. But, um, yeah, interestingly for, for Brindy, he started on the softs, not really made the sort of progress you might have expected, kind of just stuffed a bit of a train himself, but um, yeah, Liam doing a fantastic job, obviously he's had the best of seasons, not got too many points, as Bennett's connection doesn't look great, so I'm just going to stick with it for a little bit longer and if it continues then... Thankfully it's not really near it. Yeah, but um, it's just going to be strong. I don't know, I'll see what I'm doing. Hmm. Right then, McEwen looks as though he might have the run on Sem. And uh, I'll tell you what, the Mercedes cars up front there, as you can see, are going to be swapping out, but I'm going to have to flick back to see McEwen then passing the McLaren as Sem. Sem's got literally no battery left there, down to 3%, and McEwen pretty easy down the inside into the comp, gets the move done then, and up into P3 goes the pass driver, and the Mercedes have swapped round at the front, so Dylan takes the lead off of Bunny, perhaps tactical, I'd imagine at least at this point of the race they are going to be working together. I mean, if they can pull a few seconds, then they can start to battle towards the end. But right, right now, I think they've got to focus on the job at hand, the task at hand, which is the team game, and making sure that they remain in P1 and P2. Brindy again, right on the back of Liam through sets two James, we just can't get close enough to him. And the field already really spread out, um, as you say. It looks as though um, there are a few drivers then really struggling. I mean, Camo, of course, who has now retired, unfortunately, um, came in right at the end of the qualifying, or came in during qualifying, hadn't set any laps. So uh, perhaps he was uh, maybe brought in later on and wasn't necessarily prepared to race. McEwen is looking pretty quick because he's now pulled the gap down to the Mercedes by a few tenths. Still remains on around 50% of his battery. And I'll tell you what, Sem's going to start to struggle with his because he has no battery left mm -hmm. and he's also got the Ferrari, check this out now within half a second of him as Liam comes into pit, that's an early pit stop for the Alvatari as we've got more that's yellow flags now that poo on, that's for Taz so maybe Liam preempting a possible safe car or VSC it doesn't look like it's going to be all on this occasion and I say it was early, it was lap 6 Liam pitted so yeah, perhaps a lap or two earlier than you might have thought what tyres has he gone on to James? That'll be the yeah, medium and yeah, maybe a lap or two early for sure with the fresher tyres uh, but the car. medium should be up to it, yeah, right? Um, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, definitely. But um, McEwen actually has got to 
within 1.1 for two months, but that DRS is just so powerful down the down the tunnel straight that it it, uh, it can treat by about four or five tenths. So uh, yeah, he's got his work out for, for sure if he wants to catch up to them. Maybe uh, try a bit of an undercut and, and force the uh, the Mercs to one of one of them to stay a bit longer and hopefully uh, catch up to the back of them. But um, yeah, yeah, checks um, the ball is definitely oh, in the city. Oh, the moment. Isn't it? Yeah, Czech's um, gone past Sem now, and um, Brindy looks to be attacking Bennett as he's gotten um, obviously some clean air after Liam pitted. So yeah, Taz unfortunately was firing as well. Just a few guys really did seem to be struggling in these opening exchanges then. So this is, I guess, a good opportunity as well to uh, check Bennett's connection as we've got Brindy Boy right on the back of him looking to make up for lost ground. The ground that he of course lost in qualifying. On this occasion they're not going to be close enough into the bus stop to go for a move. There's a big lag spot there actually for Bennett. So he might be in a little spot of bother if that continues. As we've got now Bunny, McEwen and Czech all in the pits. So Dylan's decided to let his teammate have the pit preference. So Bunny covering off. Uh, with Q and then by the looks of things as um, he was looking for an undercut on the Mercedes driver not going to be able to get it though he's going to have to do the job out on track but it looks as though might have been held up a little bit there Bunny in the pits there's now Brindy then going for the move on Bennett down the camel straight they're going to be going almost side by side into the combat but Brindy's got the move done big lag spike there from Bennett yeah McEwen might pull him out of the race pretty soon McEwen might get the net lead here actually Harry he's done what I said he should and they could have had to run from that split from the Mercedes or the inevitable split from the Mercedes but he must have been held up side by someone in his, in his stock well check pitted as well yeah James. so of course the Ferrari garage um, after the Mercedes yeah. one just, as um, well just keep me updated on Bennett because I'll uh, try and get an island in the pit so I'd probably be he's getting big lag yeah, he's looked fine from the other half of that, so it's kind of hard to tell I've, when I've been flipping between them for, for a few laps he's, he's not had any issue yeah well McCune's doing a good job though as you say he is um, within Bunny's DRS now and has slightly more battery as yeah, well than he's the driver so McEwen's definitely pulled himself into a very nice position in this race like I say, a driver that's definitely been on an upturn in form and fortunes as of late, um, with a few podiums now in the last few rounds. And he could possibly even be on for the win here tonight. Yeah, it's keeping an eye on the destination still. Honestly, personally for me, it doesn't look bad enough for him to be leaving the lobby. But um, if it doesn't look great for you, then uh, I think it should be... Uh, the other call of sitting on the mainstream, but um, yeah, don't, don't want to kind of force that onto you, but um, it, it looks fine for me as I said a couple of times. So McEwen, obviously, yeah, as you say, in a great position now, chose just to sit behind Bunny and, and sort of keep all of that DRS, which I think is probably a, I would say, maybe a smart thing to do, but it could have been worth them getting ahead actually and splitting the two marks because no one's been able to do that yet in this race. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Bunny, um, but it would be fine for me. Yeah, they've they've said as they were the top oh, three, it, albeit it. they are yeah. now a lot closer together. Brindy Boy as well now just picking up a time penalty himself. He is uh, actually currently in the lead of the race, albeit yet to pit. Um, but yeah, they, McEwen's really brought himself into this battle for um, what is net P1. So this is exciting to see. As the two Mercedes, I wouldn't say missed a trick because obviously Bunny got held up massively in the pit. Um, no, I, I don't but think maybe. I don't think they could have done anything to, to, to the two off. I don't think they could have done anything differently, to be honest. McEwen looks quick. He had a lot of battery that he was able to use compared to, uh, compared to the Mercs. If they can just, if these three can just keep uh, in, in hand together and, and not allow the likes of Chef and Sam to catch up, then they're doing themselves a, a real favour. Um, yeah, any, any battling really will probably cost them at this stage. Although obviously that's going to have to happen at some point. But, um, but no, I think obviously maybe they want to stay out and make the most of their soft tyres. 
uh, yeah, I don't really think they could have done that any differently to what they did. I think the timing of one of these pit stops was probably just a bit unfortunate because I'm, I'm sure it would have been like check or some uh, pulling off in the pits. Yeah, as McEwen says, the fastest lap then, so he's looking pretty quick. We've got Brindy in the pits as well. There's an interesting battle going on as Liam got a pretty decent undercut pitting a few laps earlier than the guys around him. He's uh, got himself ahead of Bennett and Jason and Connor as well, who are kind of running in a little bit of a foursome here, battling out for what is P10 on track, but I think it's probably a net six or seven by the looks of things. Um, so yeah, Liam's got himself into a pretty nice position. It looks as though Bennett is going to be going for a move on the Alpha Tari. They're going to be going side by side then. One Alpha on another, albeit different teams, down into the con. Bennett gets ahead of Liam then and takes himself up into P10. So pretty nice move there with the help of the DRS. Um, relatively easy all in all, but you know he got the job done and uh, moves himself up into 10th. Liam as well, managing his battery pretty nicely. He's around 60%. Uh, so we'll follow him around, see if he can keep in touch with Bennett, because he's going to have to uh, if he wants, well, if he wants to defend from Jason behind, because Jason seems pretty quick as well, James. Mm -hmm. Kind of just hanging on to the back of these guys and, and pushing it definitely through this middle sector again. So I think this definitely seems like Liam's weakest part of the track is Bennett and a little bit of a lag spike as Liam oh, gives oh, him time. I was to say as well, Liam's really impressed me this week because he's been picking up quite a lot of penalties recently and on there hasn't he but if he can just stick to the one it hopefully won't affect him but yeah Jason looking quick at the moment uh, obviously I said earlier that the tire wear might not be too bad if he can stick in the train but um, yeah his, his mediums towards the end won't be, uh, won't be helping him at all but I've been uh, up and took on this battle for the, for the net race lead for the, for the last couple of the laps and to be honest if you ask me right now it looks like McEwen so quick to start all three of these guys he's got the most battery he's been able to stick with the team like Steve today and through the middle of the sector, he's practically pushing Buddy around some of the corners. So uh, if he can split these two marks uh, when they're fighting away through the traffic, then uh, he'd be my uh, he'd be my favourite to take the win at the moment. And looks as though he might be going for a move now as well. The Haas driver then in the DRS in the slipstream. Not going to be able to on this occasion as Dylan has now closed right at the back of Van Dorn, who's also still yet to pit after starting from P18 with that crash in qualifying. In fact, he's kind of gone out of the way there by the looks of things of Dylan and now Bunny's going to look to try and get his way past the Alpha Tower as well but I don't think he's going to be able to on this occasion this is really Dylan's chance if he wants to try and preserve that P1 as uh, Van Dorn does get out of the way which is very kind of him because he doesn't have to do that by any means I mean he's racing these guys technically um, but yeah get out of the way so Dylan then is in fact <laughs> leaving his teammate um, high and dry here perhaps um, breaking that one second barrier he's got more battery though than Bunny as well um, but it would almost help him to keep his teammate in the DRS because they can work together to defend from the half of McEwen who does seem to at least be the second fastest driver out of the three um, obviously it's difficult to compare him to Dylan but he definitely seems faster than Bunny at the moment wouldn't you say James? Yeah for sure he's looking very easy going down to the bus stop thought about a dark the outside but Bunny was quick to, to cover back under braking. Um given the blow actually because the Peter got a bit hot on the uh, on the brake maybe just easing up a little bit as I well, can see Jason and Liam so swapping positions. But yeah if McEwen maybe this time is braking a bit, getting a bit distracted by Bunny then that, that would have uh, given him a bit of damage so he did well to slow it down nice and early and sort of uh, Guess that Bunny was going to move back to the racing line again. Yeah, Bunny now with the flashing light on the back of his car, that means I believe below 10% ERS, it's either 10 or 20, but either way, that means he is really struggling for the battery. We've got but, a brilliant battle going on, sorry, James, for P11. Liam and Connor both getting past Jason down the Kemmel straight with the DRS. Jason completely ran out of his battery there, so Liam holds on to P11 for now, and Connor up to P12. Um, really good racing actually between Jason and Liam. He was unfortunate to lose out because he was initially going for the move on the Avatar. He's trying it down the inside of the Williams. Bit of contact there. Front left to Connor's side pod. Connor gets away unscathed, but Jason, little bit phased by that, picking up a penalty just shortly after as well. But it was good battling up until then. Good clean racing. Unfortunately, I think Jason's just getting a little bit too eager there, going for a, going for a move on Connor, which didn't quite work out. 
Um, but yeah, then... apologies for interrupting there, but uh, we had a brilliant battle going on for for, uh, for P11. Yeah, Frindy's ended up going a bit under the radar here. He's going to the leader in P5, and he's with Sen for uh, what will be a net P4 when everyone makes a hit stop. So yeah, gone under the radar a little bit. It seems to be sort of behind a few guys in the first game, but he, he could be It'll making... Be uh, five, it will. Yeah, could be making... Be making some moves towards the end. Uh, these guys not not that far off the, the top three. There, I think they're just about within penalty range. Maybe slightly out of it, but um, the Grindy, has got some pace um, hidden that we've not been able to see yet. Then uh, he could get himself onto the podium. Still, should be big for the uh, the championship after the, the shaky weeks. But um, we're going to go on the back stretch here for Grindy. Let's McCune's going for the move, sorry James, on Bunny, he's going for it, Dylan in fact choosing to give McCune the toe, but Bunny later on the break, yeah, it's much worse as they the went into Le Com side by side, but yeah, good defending from Bunny, and as I say, smart driving from McCune, not really put, putting his car in too dangerous a position, um, Czech is currently P, a net P4, um, with Brindy and Sem, they're battling it out for what will be an FP5, but yeah, Czech, um, in fact, having a pretty decent race as well. Another driver kind of gone under the radar a bit um, and is benefiting from this battling out in front because he, he's nearly, he's only half a second off of the DRS and if these guys battle perhaps a bit harder, he might be able to just sneak into it. He had just set the fastest lap as well, James, on the last lap, so he's obviously got some good pace in that Ferrari. But unfortunately, when it gets to the straights and the slipstream and the toe and the DRS is just so powerful, he unfortunately loses out too much. But look, he's, he's pushing hard. He's got basically no battery, however. Yeah. Uh, but all he really needs is a little bit of a fight to go on up ahead, and he's going to be right in there. No, he's definitely doing the smart thing. It's, it's worth just using every last bit of battery that you have to try and get yourself into that DRS, because once you're in it, it's pretty hard to lose it. I uh, don't think he's quite going to do it enough, though. Uh, and that could... Don't wanna, oh, as I've oh he's going to do it now again. though, as you've been booted and McEwen goes deep into the source, so he might have a chance here, check, oh he's not going to quite get it on yeah, the occasion, just gonna but I'll tell you what now James, we might have the Mercedes swapping it round because a bit funny, sorry, right on the back of Dylan and McEwen as well, it could get a bit dicey here as um, Bunny then. Dylan lets Bunny through and then just slots in behind him. So smart driving there from the Mercedes pair. And smart from McEwen as well not to send a kamikaze move. Um, Preempting the fact that Dylan was going to slot back in behind his teammate. So yeah, good driving from the three of them. Bunny then taking the lead off his teammate. And Dylan on 50% of his battery though, James. So I wonder if um, Dylan's maybe just allowing Bunny to sort of ease it up out from and maybe try and save some of his battery up. However, you would have thought that the, uh, the way round would have been Bunny staying behind him, saving the battery, but... Oh, was, um, McEwen's gone. McEwen's gone out of Puan. I just completely missed it. Um, McEwen has lost the car out of Puan. I don't know if he hit the wall or not, but... Check then up into a net P3. I just saw the timing tower flash and a yellow flag come out for a moment, and McEwen lost the car then, which is a real shame because he was having a fantastic race on for at least a P3 by lots of things and that is a real real shame for him he's now in this battle for what is P4 with Brindy and Sem and Czech is almost again on the back of the two Mercedes cars but again the, the Mercedes have found themselves in a position where they might be able to just manage this race a bit more as Van Dorn pits we've got Brindy and Sem battling out through the bus off and McEwen already looking to try and make up for lost ground as he's challenging McLaren as well is he going to go for a move down into the source thinks about it not on this occasion though and again this could be a really good battle with McEwen nearly using the car out of the source that's not going to give him the ideal run down the Kemmel straight up oh, oh, Rouge and Rally on and it looks as though Sen might be challenging now as Czech has got the DRS off the Mercedes cars so Czech is really bringing himself up into this podium battle Sem then on Brindy with the DRS it's going to be a pretty easy move then by lots of things and yeah Brindy just slotting in behind him so Sem then up into P4 that is now P4 as everyone has hit it at least the once so there you go up into fourth goes the McLaren of Sem he's got Brindy though behind him McEwen also joining him in this battle we've got Riggsy then just getting past jib jab by the lots of things on the hard he's up into P9 so it's a decent recovery so far from Riggsy 
but there's a long way to go yet as we're on lap 15 of 22 and I need to get you back in don't I James? Um, I might be able to just join off of your profile. I'll try that. I'll restart my game. Brindy well. just got a penalty as well, mate. I did. So, um, this, this does keep McEwen actually in P4. So, after all of this, at the moment anyway, he's only going to be losing the one position, or I've nearly jinxed him because he went very wide there at Stavolo. I think I've got myself back in. <sighs> yep, you should be good. And, and you know what? Check is now right on the back of Dylan. Although Dylan does still have a good 40% of his battery, so I wonder if he is just saving it up. Um, it'll be interesting to see if, if Bunny's managed to save a bit. He has a little. But yeah, Czech now really brought himself into this battle for the lead, which is really interesting to see. I'll tell you what, he's had a, a, a relatively quiet race up until this point, but he's gone about his business well. And he's pulled himself into this fight for the lead, and if, if he gets the win... Or, or even second and splits the Mercedes, I'm sure that would be a fantastic result for him. I'm getting, you know, 2018 vibes with the two Mercedes and a Ferrari battling it out. Maybe never this close. But nevertheless, look at them separated by about half a second. A lot of them, Brindy has gone back past Sen, but they're probably just going to keep swapping it around with the DRS. Um, same with Jib Jab and Rizzi is the racing point driver. Uh, looks to have gotten back past Ruzzi's Renault there. Oh, I'm not even getting the gaps anymore. <laughs> so the top three then, all still without penalties. So at the moment, this is just a, a clean and clear battle for P1. As it is Bunny leading Dylan, leading Czech. That is your top three. Brindy Boy and Sem. And McEwen. They're in the battle for fourth. And it's kind of all spread out. And the gaps are relatively large now. Um, as you see, obviously, once it kind of calmed down um, after the first few laps, the field spread was quite large. Um, but obviously, there's, there's a, a few kind of trains and a few battles occurring I mean after after all all was said and done I mean Bennett's found himself in a, a pretty large gap so his connection probably won't be causing any issues now anyway although like we said it didn't seem it didn't seem too bad on the holders now Jib Jab who's pitted for the softs of course sets the fastest lap uh swiftly beaten however by Van Dorn but yeah Jib Jab um, and Van Dorn both on fresh soft along with Danny, Jason and Fred. So, yeah, they're looking to make some moves and make some positions up. Jib Jab on the back of Connor now as well. If we can get over to him. See if he can get the move on the Williams driver. But I don't think he's going to be close enough. And in fact, he's got basically no battery at his disposal either has Jib Jab. The only thing I fear, James, is for this battle out front, whilst... The Mercedes have got DRS on off of one another, or one of the Mercedes has got DRS off the other one. I think Czech's just going to find it uh, increasingly difficult to actually get an overtake done, as McEwen really found out. Yeah, I think we could just be seeing uh, more of that again, to be honest. Uh, the DRS is just so powerful, if they're, uh, and they've got more than enough battery to be able to use a bit to the phone from Czech. I think uh, at the moment, and this is any sort of mistakes, the, the Ferrari driver might just have to, uh, might just have to cut his glasses and, and hold it out in P3, obviously. Um, I'd rather end up third than uh, losing all in second. Obviously, that's easy for me to say, since I did the opposite on Sunday. But um, yeah, I don't think it's worth taking any unnecessary risks being in the, uh, in the championship fight or, or trying to get himself more into the, into the championship fight. But, um, it does look like a bit closer here, but I think I've just been so powerful. Mercedes have been doing it so well the, the whole race, to be fair to both Bunny and, and Dylan. So. Um, oh, we've got yellow flags. I think Connor's round. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't the, expect the anything to change out front anytime soon, to be honest. Although I'll probably yeah, keep Connor's, looking at um, Connor's just lost the car at the bus stop then, lost quite a few positions there as we've now got Danny looking to get past Rizzi as the Mercedes cars oh it's all going on at once and I'm probably going to miss something uh, no they remain the same at the top three thankfully um, Rizzi now 
in the DRS of Jib Jab and Danny as well trying to follow up but it looks as though the Renault driver is going to go for the move then down into the comp side by side they're going to go who's going to break later it is going to be Riggsy who muscles his way through and back up into P8 this is an interesting battle as well Riggsy is currently a net P8 because he's without a time penalty so um, I guess the longer he can keep these guys around him the better so it's a pretty decent recovery, or it has been a pretty decent recovery, at least thus far from Rizzi. 15 lap old hards, and while the hards aren't bad round here, um, obviously, while the, when the tyre strategy isn't too difficult, you do want to be on the softs or the mediums. But here we go then, back to this battle at the front. What are the uh, Mercedes batteries looking like, James? Checks on around 30%. Yeah, uh, very good. But until it's 60%, it's not even, uh, not even going to use them yet. Been in that front with, uh, with 40%, and that's just going to increase. Ooh, it goes very deep into that chicane every lap. It always scares me that he's been in the back of a teammate, but they've been doing this for the last 18 laps now, and uh, yeah, I think they're not there, James. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah, so, if they um, just. Uh, stick it out like this one too or maybe swap around but um, yeah it, it looks like they're quite happy to just uh, sell the, the how it is there. yeah so Bunny out front has managed to save some of his battery back up then up to around 40% as you say Dylan's been good on his battery the whole race though in fact and it looks as though he might be attacking his teammate here then down into the con they go um, although again it's a relatively easy overtake for Dylan as they've never really been fighting one another like <laughs> they've been swapping round but they've never really been going sort of wheel yeah. to wheel that looked um, a bit closer than some of the other ones to be honest i was expecting yeah i was expecting him to uh, you know, i was expecting bunny to just sort of concede i imagine the camera under that had but it looked like dylan kind of had to actually <laughs> overtake him but um it'll be interesting to see how they handle it at the end of the race of course yeah, like you it say will, it will. um I mean, I'm sure they'd rather finish 1-2 than, than both crash out battling, but, um, you know, I'm sure they both want the win. So it, it might be a bit of an interesting one down in the Mercedes camp, but Dylan's looking really strong on his battery. It, it's a strange one because he wants to keep his teammate there to avoid any risk that Czech could get him. Um, but obviously, he's looking pretty quick. Is Dylan yeah, out front? I think he's just decided that now's the time he's going to try and go for it, catch Bunny a bit off guard and try and break that DRS or at least give himself a big enough gap that um, Czech might be as well as Bunny, but um, I don't know about that personally, because that's a living bum, but at the end he uses a lot of battery, although all these guys are pretty much the exact same now. Um, yeah, it looks like uh, they've been working together so long, it seems a bit strange to me that Dylan's kind of seemingly taking it upon himself to uh, to win the race. <laughs> I mean, one of them had to do it, it was didn't they? So, uh, yeah, might be, uh, might be interesting to speak to both uh, in the interviews if they, if they are both on the podium. But here comes Bunny then, they're not done yet. I certainly have seen all this last lap, that might have been a bit premature, but it does look like the post going for it now. The amount of battery that Bunny used there, it didn't look like he was really holding back and trying to settle for P2. So uh, yeah, this one could get spicy uh, towards the end. Okay. Yeah, we got McEwen still stuck behind this. Uh, same and Bindi battle, uh, it kind of just shows how powerful the DRS is. Like, if one car has it uh, in front, it's so difficult to actually yourself get the overspeed. As Sem touches the curb at Puan and loses the car as I speak, he is round a costly mistake there from the McLaren driver. McEwen did well to avoid him, it has to be said, but yeah, big mistake there from Sem to lose the car. And now he's going to be challenged by the listening by Jib Jab into um, whatever this corner's called that I've already forgotten the name of. Campus. Um, <laughs> Campus, that's it. And Sem, big lockup. He's uh, he's flustered a bit by that mistake as he's now got the racing point of Jib Jab then right on the back of it. But Jib Jab pretty low on the battery. However, so is Sem. Is Jib Jab going to go for the move down? into the bus stop i don't think he's going to be close enough on this occasion no he's not but this battle now really getting interesting as you see van dorn and danny battling it out behind him van dorn then getting himself past danny and up into p10 
all this battling and all these mistakes helping Briggsy out because he's not got a penalty whereas all the other cars around him do. Well then guys, uh, two laps, well I've just testing two laps now to go. Uh, it's time for Rachel to drive today in the street and shot team as he's got Bunny and Dylan going side by side. Dylan holds the inside but Bunny swoops around the outside to retake the race lead. That's because of a bit of a mistake from Dylan because he's got a hell of a lot of battery left compared to his teammate but uh, I think it looks like he might just go for it back on the straight next lap if he can stick within the DRS he should be able to cruise by with that DRS advantage but um, yeah interesting tactics here from both of the stages drivers obviously Bunny wanting to hold the lead and then um, make it work for himself going into the last lap if he can get ahead then he knows that it's down to him to keep Dylan behind but Dylan has it all to do uh, MP2, check behind, I think he's just going to have to settle for this. Yeah, yeah check's just got to wait for um, a mistake or a bit of contact with the Mercedes. He's, uh, yeah, the, the, the Jim's uh, too powerful. He's uh, just going to have to sit in behind and wait. Yeah, Jib Jab has gotten past Sem and Sem nearly lost the car again through Phil on there. Uh, Danny's pretty close to the back of reason now. Is the Apple Tower going to be able to go for the move here? He's got five lap old softs compared to Reese's 18 lap old cars in theory it would be pretty easy but it's it's proving to to be the exact opposite here is um Reese's done pretty well to stick with these guys it has to be said and Van Dorn then not on this occasion so we'll go then to this battle for the lead yeah, I think um Reese has been sharp to the day actually especially on the hard side Dylan versus Bunny, Mercedes versus Mercedes, teammate versus teammate then, and Chex coming in as well, Chex coming in to join in on the action. Dylan's not Bunny. using the badge, it's like he wants to finish. Bunny defends finish. the inside, he sends Dylan then round the outside, they're going to be going side by side into Lecom. Bunny stays ahead for now and now Chex comes round the outside. Dylan's then Bunny as though He's going to stick his nose in and he's going to get the overtake done I think his check is he's going to have the inside line now for the next corner they're going to be in side by side here the Ferrari ahead of the Mercedes and he's got the move done but that's surely got to be a massive tactical yeah, blunder the, there from Dylan the, the masters of their own downfall right there Dylan could have easily taken the lead they've obviously decided between them that it's going to be funny to win the race and that is how it's going to end by the looks of things but yeah Dylan throwing away P2 for himself there, and maybe even a race winner, he's been a bit selfish, although uh, I think they have quite a good relationship. Right, right back at Chet though, James. Yeah, but I think right back at him. He's got a good relationship with Mercedes, so maybe if Dylan had to come and say, they wouldn't have been too happy about that, but yeah, he could have easily done it if he'd wanted to, so, uh, so clearly... Chet's got no battery left, seven. Dylan on 30%, he's going to have the overspeed, he's got the slipstream. I don't think this is over yet. No, he's going to get away with it. Around the outside of Blanchimont. He's going to go down the inside into the bus stop. Who's going to break later? It looks as though Dylan is just about, but he's still going to so stick tight. it in there. Is check through the bus stop and on the exit. Who's going to get the better traction to the line? They're going to be going side by side. Ooh. It's Dylan then to tape E2, but Bunny wins the Belgian Grand Prix. It's check in third. McEwen recovers to P4. It's Brindy in fifth with Bennett coming home P6. Wow. Jim Jab crossed yeah. the line 7, Sem 8, but Rigsy takes P7 after penalty. Van Dorn 9, Sem drops out of the top 10 and he's not happy with his race as he leaves the session straight away. Danny takes the final points playing position in P10. It's Liam 12 with Jason in 13th, what could have been for him. Predators is going to cross the line 14th, Connor 15th, Poop of Benz 16th and Clock is 17th. But wow, what a last lap battle between Czech and... Dylan mm. and yeah you can't ever feel he made that difficult for himself yeah I think it'll be really interesting to, to interview these guys and see how they, feel, uh, how they feel about that so um yeah it's, it's a different call I think if I was Dylan the March he's been a bit selfish there and come for it he almost lost himself P2 by doing that I think it's, it's a tough one to call because obviously they've, they've agreed beforehand to, uh, that, that it's going to be funny to win it so uh yeah, they out for it all the way completely. The problem for them was the DRS was too powerful on that straight, but um, so he, you know, so he going so slowly and not using the battery just allowed like, check to, to come and always take the both of them. So uh, yeah, they just about got away with it, but their, their own confidence almost cost them there. Yeah, have we got um, a driver of the day? Doesn't look like it. Maybe that'll have to be uh, 
maybe that'll have to be something that we decide between ourselves. Van Dorn gets the driver of the day off of the game, of course, starting P18 after his crash in qualifying. He recovered to score some points at the end, but let's take nothing away from Bunny, who wins the Belgian Grand Prix from pole position. Might I add, so pole and the victory here tonight for Silly Bunny. Brilliant drive from him. His teammate didn't, does come home P2 in the end. So it's a Mercedes 1 2 with a Ferrari in third. Am I in 2017? Yes, I am by the looks of things. Um, <laughs> there you have it. Three pit stop or a lap. Take the hards all the way to the end to get P7. I guess it's a question of what could have been for the Renault driver, and it's a question of what could have been for a lot of the drivers here tonight. Jib Jab takes P8, then Van Dorn recovers to ninth, with Danny in P10 and scoring the last point available. Sem is 11th, with Liam in 12th, Jason 13th, three more drivers that were probably thinking what could have been for their races. Preds comes home 14th, with Connor 15th, Benz is 16th, Plot 17th, and then Taz and Camo Wheel, two retirements in 18th and 19th but no safety car and no VSC this evening which is uh, perhaps slightly surprising um, but there you have it fair play it seemed like a pretty pretty clean race on the whole from at least what we caught on the stream um, but we've got at least a couple of guys in the party so um, I'll hand it over to you James to start the interviews and if there's anyone we're missing I'll try and get them in. Uh, yeah, we haven't got Dylan in but uh, he left the lobby pretty quickly so I'm not sure if he's still online but either way, yeah. We'll start with Czech, your uh, third place driver for this evening. I'm sure you could have, uh, could have. You were, you were maybe thinking about the uh, the chance of the win there for a second, weren't you? Um, caught up a lot to, uh, to the two Mercedes and then... Um, yeah, almost, almost had Dylan, but he just managed to get you back on the line. Uh, I'm just not sure. Boxes. Heading up the hill uh, for the last lap, you were sort of licking your lips and hoping that <laughs> something would happen and you could maybe sneak win. But uh, yeah, just take us uh, through your race on the whole and, and tell us how it was. Yeah, sorry, I was just trying to listen to the stream there to see if it was uh see if it was working by then. Okay, but yeah. Um Oh no, we'll just, we'll count with the interviews well if they're if they're working, they're working. If not then if not. But uh, yeah, we'll move on to second place. Dylan. Uh almost through B two away. Uh obviously it looked like on stream that you were uh just happy to, to sit behind Bunny and, and let him take the win and come in P two yourself. But um yeah, you had to you had to work for it there right at the end, didn't you? Um just talk us uh, through that final lap, really. I, I think that's what most of the most of the people will, will want to hear about. How how was it from your perspective? No, oh, me, me and Bunny were fighting the whole race. It's uh, neck neck and toe. Just fighting, 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 fighting. No, I mean, <laughs> not sure what Bunny told you guys, but uh, yeah, it's um, the moment we were in one two, he got pole, so I felt like it was his win, uh, not mine. 
uh, just sticking by him, harvesting, harvesting some ERS for one final attack from Czech, which came at the final end, uh, at the, uh, the final lap. And um, yeah, during the middle of the attack, I was in my head, I was like, ah, oh, I threw it, uh, threw it away. And then it's all these red light flashing, I was like, oh, I got 50% of ERS, it's just all rinse it at the end of the launch room on it. Uh, I was kind of, kind of just hearing Crofty saying, "Master, step around the ice of NASA in, uh, in Blanchemont." And I was trying to do the same thing, basically. And then, uh, and then my heart's just racing. Great race! Uh, congratulations to the guys. And uh, good points. Yeah, it certainly was. Uh, I believe that's your first one two of the season. Or like, correct me if I'm wrong. It's far as I'm Ah, yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Far in. Yeah, from, uh, spinning. <laughs> spinning. <corner>. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, anyway, congratulations there, Sorry. second one to the season for Mercedes and great points for the team. We'll move on to the race winner, Silly Bunny. Um, yeah, great race from yourself, obviously, pole to win. Um, working well with, with Dylan as well for the whole of it. Um, so uh, we obviously know that it was uh, you going to be taking the win on the last lap, but uh, yeah, just talk us through that race anyway, because obviously I'm, I'm sure it was uh, it was good fun to, to work with Dylan for the whole thing. Um, cheers, yeah. I mean, to be honest, this morning I didn't think I was going to be racing. I felt pretty, pretty shoddy. So, um, yeah, to, to, to like getting Colly in and somehow set pole, it's pretty shocked. Um, I know Dylan bottled his lap, I think, at the end. He probably would take pole for me. But yeah, to be one through was good. And then Sam, I think, shot turn one deep. So then from there on, it was pretty straightforward for us too. I don't think we were not in P1 or P2 for the rest of the race, um, apart from the cars that didn't find a different strategy. But yeah, Dylan was literally like a second lap faster than me, so I mean, he, he could have taken a win, so yeah, massive props to him for actually giving it to me, so that was sick, cause first win of the season, so um, yeah, no, it feels, feels pretty good to finally get my win, literally like over halfway through the season, especially it's come sooner, but um, you know, that was sick, and also the move at the end, Dylan around check, that was so hot, <laughs> that was so <laughs> sick, so yeah, fair play, mate, yeah, cheers Dylan, so, I, I owe that to you, and uh, big up Mercedes one too, so. Don't take, credit, don't take credit away from yourself, mate. It's a great race. Oh, thanks. Look at the look. Talk yourself a bit down there, mate. The safety is unstoppable. Apart from that, right? Yeah, obviously, um, 13 points gained on, on Brindy there as well, I think it was. So, um, am I out of the championship fight yet, are you? Uh, yeah, no, I obviously did it as well. So, um, yeah, that's sick. I mean, I, I don't really care about that. I just want to be checked, to be honest. So. <laughs> Looking anyway, if you if you do beat Czech, then it, it could be a, a good cha a good chance that you you do take the title. But um, yeah, either way, if you're not thinking about that, then <laughs> fair enough. Um, I think that's it for the for the interviews this evening, Harry. I'm not sure if anyone will be able to hear them. Uh, Xbox hasn't been great. Uh, I've not been great, but um, yeah, I've, en I've enjoyed it nonetheless. And I'll just let you round off the stream as usual. Yeah, it shows what a week off does, eh? Um, <laughs> Right then, yes, that is that then for this evening. A Mercedes 1-2 with a Ferrari in P3. Are we in real life? But be sure to join us next week for Monza, the Temple of Speed, as we head to round 15 of the season for the Italian Grand Prix. And be sure to join us as well throughout the rest of the weekend for the various other races going on around Spa. But that is all for this evening. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, thank you to everyone for another brilliant race. Good night.